All right, mate. Yeah, I'll bring you in in a second. I'm just going to do the title roll. Okay, um, hang on then. Right. <laughs> Alright mate. Yeah, I'll put you in a second and just gonna do the title. Okay. Put my headphones on really, shouldn't I just stop the tone bouncing back through that? You think I'm that clever? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I didn't think it was going to work then, uh, but it has. Hello. Secret Vault here with a kind of fake Stella Artois from Lidl's. It's great. It's the only way people can afford to drink these days, but uh, there we are. Um, right, well, I'll do my obligatory. We've got um, ALW Exploration is waiting in the wing, so I don't want to keep him waiting too long. So... Um, I will just say hello to a few people. We've got Tony Marshall in the chat, Anthony Wilkinson, G. Gibbs, Sab, Sab the Seeker, Frank Triggs, Darren Dickinson, AU, Captain Caveman, uh, ALW Research. Where did I have you ever heard that one from before? Uh, Liam LK, Epic Gaming Moments, Luke Neo Adventures, uh, Princess Lozzy, Tony Marshall, uh, Dark Corners UK, L. Rose, Sunshine Dragon, Melissa Jones, Paranormal. Twig One UK, Adumanta, Princess Lozzy, Punches Couches, Loopy Lou, Smitty AVFC, Half an Hour. Um, we got uh, Dinka Mozzie, wow. Um, Paul Burns, Exploring with Tints, Punches Couches, D Row, The Haunted uh, Coachman, um, Anthony Edgington, Rick Horden, Exploring Ginger, Dazzy84, Smitty AVFC, uh, Jeanette Ellis, DJ Carl Million, Exploring with Campers. Conate, Explore Norfolk, uh, Subversive, The Urban Legend UK, and Robert Cheney. Yeah, we're down there now, so we've done it. Oh, Great Awakening Team Denmark and Barry Little doing some moderation work. Thank you very much, Debbie Joe, Daniel, uh, Mike Spanner. They're all just getting in there last. Right, and oh, Bad Gaming and Sold. Right, no more. Okay, so let's bring in um, Mr. ALW. So here he is, waiting uh, very patiently. So, Mr. ALW. Hey. Hello, sir. Hello there. How are you doing? Not too bad. And yourself? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff going on at home, but otherwise good. Oh, well. Yeah, you keep, know how it is. Keeping you busy. Yeah. <laughs> hope, hope it's just busy, nothing bad. So... Cool. So you got a new drone and you've been using it. I have indeed. Um, yeah, yeah, the uh, the the zoom. So yeah, I, I splashed my other one into the into the sea, looking at red sands. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. That, that was a bit sad. But um, the did you know that the people um, donated to me to for me to get another one? Did you know we? Yeah, had, like, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, we had a, like a donation thon thing, and uh, we got within a record amount of time you know it was like a really short amount of time we got um 650 pounds something like that i think it was yeah so nice. just goes to show the power of uh the community when they come together so it's really nice of people Completely. to do that yeah so cheers to all you secret vault drone loving michael foxtrots yes <laughs> <laughs> A, yeah, I was just going through the phonetic alphabet in my head then. Mm, I thought, mm. oh, that's a different one. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it helps. Everyone in the chat. <laughs> helps, uh, helps the algorithm not stamp on me, I think, a bit. But yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the old bike fox trots. Well, yeah, because I swear far <laughs> too much, really, on my lives. And I, I, I edit it all out of the. The, the actual videos because I swear like a trooper and I don't seem to be able to help myself a lot of the time but I do edit it out of the videos 
But you did your uh, mm. little uh, f bomb from Josh, which I don't know if he does in his own videos. But you heard, you heard an exclusive f bomb from Josh, which wasn't meant to be in there, by the way. But uh, the blank, yeah, the, <laughs> the sounds going beep over the top were in the wrong place, and he actually ended up saying it. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah, the Jeremy Beadle beeping was like a few seconds out, wasn't it? Mm, mm. Yeah, I remember I... that from Beadle's about. It's supposed to, you're supposed to put the beep on top of the them bits, but never yes. mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. I was, I was dragging the timeline around, and it must have slid these yeah. marks for some reason. I don't know. So weird. I'll tell you what, I have noticed recently is, and I don't know if you've got any experience of this. I've put. Um, like you know, music that you can buy, free music that you can put onto videos. I've done that a couple of times, uploaded it all, and it's been there. I've listened to it back myself, and then when it comes out on actual YouTube, it's just muted. I've never, never noticed that before, but it's happened twice now, just recently. Uh, it's just like they just that section's just muted out, hmm. and it's proper weird because usually you get a copyright claim or something like that or they'll just you know let it through and then tell you afterwards but yeah they just mute that section right, i've because never noticed it before you, you play back your video and it's still there in the video hmm. that you uploaded so it's there but it's youtube for taking it out yeah wow yeah. no i've weird. never had that oh. no. well i have now and it's strange yeah because i know you can actually oh cheers by the way What's your poison yeah, tonight? Cheers. What's your poison tonight? Uh, Carlin. Mm. The finest from Burton upon Trent. Yeah, where uh, I was. Morris. Morris. I think we were at Burton yeah. on Trent, weren't we, the other day uh, at the uh, Scream Fest with. Was that Bert? Is that Burton on Trent? I think it is, isn't it? I don't know. I didn't go. I'm sorry. I'm not think, sure. I think it was. Um, Somebody will know in the chat. Yeah. Derbyshire. Yes, Derbyshire, that's right, mm. yeah. Yeah. Nice, it looked good. I saw Jackie Green had met Dan Dixon, and uh, my child's just walked into the room. Come say hello, Thomas. Yeah. This is Thomas from Thomas's Game and Adventures. Shameless plug there. Is it? Yeah, uh, thanks. Hello, yeah. Thomas from Thomas Gaming Adventures. Yeah, goodbye, shut the door, mate, please. Goodbye, Thomas from Thomas Gaming Adventures. Yeah, he's off to bed now. So. Oh, well. Quite right. They should be seen and not heard. <laughs> Spank. Oh, Tracy Jackson. Never, never allowed out of the bedroom. That's the best way. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that on YouTube. There's like a 20 second delay on that. So ah. I'm talking complete rubbish. Yeah. Ooh. We've had um, uh, Jan Brunkel has donated uh, through the, uh, the stream yard. Um, well, it's not stream now, it's stream labs, which is the best way to do it because we get 100% of that money instead of 50% uh, oh, yeah. of it going towards YouTube and Tracy Jackson. Um, she's, yeah, that's what I saw. She's donated on uh, normal, normal, um, what do they call it? St uh, super chats. I forget the bloody words now. Mm. Super chat. Thank you for that. She says, have a drink on, on her. So thank you, Tracy. Wow. And, uh, nice one, Tracy. Yeah. Oh, um, well, actually, Jan actually did it through <laughs> through the super chat as well. So actually, yeah, yeah, it wasn't quite how I thought it was, but yeah. Um, oh well. So uh, now I'm I'm very bad at uh, reading people's comments. So um, if you do put something in there and you want me to try and pick it out, if you put it in capitals, then it's something that you you're wanting me to read. Although I'll probably miss it, but you know you can you can type it in a couple of times, but you never know. If you put those up there, whereas if you're just chatting amongst yourselves, if you don't put it in capitals, then then I don't uh, I don't have to start reading every single message. So, um, so what have you been up to recently, then, um, Mister ALW? Anything exciting? Done any good explores? Ever been? Uh, been to Germany again mm. uh, recently. Uh, that was good. That Maybe was that I'll... was pretty awesome. T-shirt on the back of my chair now. Uh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, got some pretty interesting places, but I still need to edit that. So that will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. um, Are we talking bunkers here? Been doing? Wartime stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cold War stuff, yeah. Um, oh, name slipped my mind. The guy who did uh, Nick Catford. Nick Catford mm -hmm. um, 
I was chatting to him before I went and he sort of said, he doesn't sort of give pins out and I didn't ask for him. He says, oh, try exploring this sort of area. Uh, and we already had that on the sort of places we'll go in because Dave, who I go exploring with, used to be stationed there. So we went and we, it's mad. It's like the NATO forces at the end of the Cold War, they said, oh, well, I don't need this anymore. So they just left. Mm. and didn't like knock it down didn't you know like here all the ROC posts get trashed rotor bunkers get sealed up and BT take them over out there the Germans didn't want it and we didn't use it anymore so they just left it mm. so it's just there for exploring so pretty cool um, yeah and then back in this country because at the minute I've got some stuff at home going on so I can't travel far at the minute so i've been doing a railway series um so that's been that's been quite enjoyable to do just use railway there's one that ran between hull and barnsley and i've been sort of logging that as i go along yes uh, there's quite a few tunnels on it uh cuttings and things like that bridges a bit of it's in use because so dr beach in shut some railways in the late 50s and early 60s just as the national power was getting going and the power stations built a row of power stations uh, along a along a river, and next to the river was a railway. So they were like, "Ah, oh, we'll use that to get the coal delivered from the from the collieries that are just over there." But in between, because obviously the government that doesn't actually speak to each other, different <laughs> departments, as you may well know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so they built the power stations halfway through building those. Um, they pulled the train track up. So they couldn't actually get the coal delivered. So then Drax, well, what is now Drax Power Group, paid in 1972 to have the railway put back in, which at that time was national power. So to save money, they ripped the railway track up, smashed it all to bits, got rid of the signal boxes, flattened the level crossings, flattened the bridges. Then in 72, they put, put it all back again. So we sort of filmed all that. So that was that was pretty cool, watching the biomass trains coming and dumping the dumping that off and things it's interesting to do so like I say at the minute I'm not going not going too far so that was something something to film so I don't want this all to be about me plugging my stuff because I'm not <laughs> that ain't why I've come on here oh no that's, that's fine <laughs> but ask me a question no <laughs> no yeah we, we you know like to know what people have been up to you know it's uh obviously yeah. we're, gonna, we're probably going to get on to the subject of the the oil rigs and uh you know what what went on there but mm. um uh somebody did actually say to me the other day I was sort of um I think it was when I was at Screamfest and they said um oh you should go and visit um ALW and I said, "Where does he live again?" And and I've, I I think I've m- memorized now that it is Hull, so I can remember that yeah. it is Hull. But at the time, I had to be reminded. And then I looked it on a map, and I was like, mm, "That's quite a long way." It's <laughs> a long way. Even from yeah. Derby, it was a long yeah. way. So yeah, it's still a good hour and a half from there. Only mm. two hours from there. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, it uh, is. Well, yeah, wasn't something I could just uh, click my fingers and do, but you know, you never know. One yeah, day, pop round the corner, might find my way up there, and I'll I'll give you a shout if we ever do. Yeah, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've got plenty of places up here. Um, for the next sort of year or two, I've actually got an RAF base because I know the owner of it. It's a shut down one, and they run airsoft there, uh, and he's the owner of the airsoft place. So, get in there whenever I want quite like that place is that a bunker um, then or no it's an RAF base what a, a full size with runways and hangars and stuff yeah wow yeah 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 so I've been filming a lot of that but again it's editing it um, yeah but that's earmarked for redevelopment at some point pending the people who want to redevelop it want to basically knock everything down and put three story townhouses on it um i think it's quite vulgar but um you just got a new subscriber scott donaldson ah. yeah the the local council keep knocking it back mm-hmm. so long may that continue because i want to keep exploring it mm. Mm. um somebody's asking here in the chat they're saying uh for yourself are there still tunnels at uh, stenigo or stenigot 
A Stenny Jean. Kind of got yeah, but the owners aren't very keen on people visiting. Um, yeah, I know Ian's been. Ian and Chris have been from our case. They went. Uh, they went in. There was. Um, there is parts of it left. Obviously, the dishes have gone. There was five. There was five um, dishes. Though. Part of it wasn't rota, and it wasn't ace high it was something else sort of in the 60s and 70s uh but the local landowner has scrapped all those now even though they were grade two listed mm. uh, the last one went during the lockdown of early sorry i said the l word sort of january time i saw an instagram post and they had the you know the big jcb type digger with the thing cutting its bits because you were made of primarily steel and high grade marine steel, which is worth quite a lot of money scrap. So they're all gone now. But the the bunker block, which looks a bit like a rotor bunker, um, that's still there and there's still bits in there, but the like I say the landowner isn't keen on visitors. So um yeah, there are bits underground as well. We visited that not summertime and got in explored it got out then i droned it because there is still a oh sorry uh what's it called chain home there's a chain home mast there still and the ref still actually own that and they use it for working at height and um maintenance at height and things like that so it's that's i think that's at least grade two listed so they can't do anything with that and the mod still own that tower and that's one of the stereotypical uh, towers that sort of goes up like that, a bit like the Eiffel Tower, and it's got the big flats on it, the big antenna pieces. Yes, yeah. Um, I was droning that, uh, and the landowner actually came out, and he was looking at my drone, and he was waving his arms about, you know. So, yeah, they, they're not keen on, on visitors, Stanley got. Uh, but, yeah, there are bits and bobs there to be discovered and uh, put out there. So I know Ian went, but I don't think he ever released it. So right. Not to my knowledge. It was on Patreon, but I don't think he ever put it out on full on YouTube unless someone else knows otherwise in the chat. That's but, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, Stanley got a cool place. Very cool indeed. Mm. Um somebody else is asking, yeah. does having Josh and Steve on my channel help with the views? Um, I'm not terribly sure it does, to be honest, unless people who are already subscribers of my channel would spot that, then, you know, it, it kind of gets me more views from my own viewers, but I, I, I don't think it brings in new people because unless they know about us, they're, they're not going to sort of spot that Josh and Steve are in these videos. I mean, I don't make a big thing of it like, um... In the title like exploring with josh you know to kind of draw people in but he i do put it in the tags so yeah mm. yeah i found you from ian mm. i found you from an rks video that's yeah. how i discovered you nice. um you went to it was a permission visit of a railway i think it was active railway but there was a bunker underneath couple of two or three years ago now there was you there you were there and ian and chris um but yeah my memory fades me a bit and you had uh you had a gimbal with a i think it had a canon camera on it so this is sort of date referencing it for you and then on the bottom on the bottom of the gimbal you had a light on the bottom of the gimbal oh hang on you're talking about the railway bit was um chill mark and it was an old yeah, it was. There are bunkers at Chilmark, and you're talking about the, hmm. I think the old railway that used to go up there, and then they would switch, uh, the, um, stuff that was on the back of the train. They would unload it onto platforms there. Uh, there was a, a half of a, fire engine, on the platform. Is that the one as well? Was half a fire it could engine. Be, yeah. I think it Things, was I watch so many videos, I get them all mixed up in my head. <laughs> yeah. And then I do like my work stuff and that muddles with it. So it just becomes a big 
airbags model in my head then. Yeah. So I wonder if it was that one. Could be. It could well be. I remember the the person who had the keys because it was a permission visit opened a big door. He opened a big door and then he went down some steps. And it was just full of cobwebs. You know, people hadn't been down there for a lot of years. And then most of it was inside then. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was about two or three years ago. Hmm. I would say. God, I lose, wanna... I lose track slightly and we've done, done so many things. Yeah. Uh... Same here. Well, to be honest, it was an Ian video. That was I watched the IKS one. That's how I got to know you. And I know Ian films in advance. Some of his videos, when they come out, are actually a year old. So it yeah. could have been four years ago. Yes. So... Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I know he's got a lot of footage in the in the sort of uh, the cupboard waiting to come Repertoire. out. Repertoire. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I'm just thinking how uh, how how terrible it would be if he had it all on one hard drive and that hard drive crashed and he lost like a year's worth of work. So for somebody that doesn't actually put it up onto YouTube, I would suggest uh, what I do. I've got a separate channel and, and I upload my footage onto this separate channel unedited. But then if my hard drives die, I've got one backup copy, you know. So, yeah, that's my way of getting around it. But free cloud storage well, it is free cloud it is it's <laughs> unlimited you know and they're all yeah. unlisted and very few people ever get to see this footage apart from me you know but it is just mm. unlimited really yeah. yeah so and there's me i bought a i bought a nas mm. so it's all like at work on a nas but that obviously costs money the sort of outlay to buy all the drives and all that whereas you can just use google's instead yes yeah, good idea, Matthew. Mm. So uh, something to think about, folks, if you need somewhere to back up your stuff, is is put it on Unlisted on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, give it to them to sort out. Yeah. Epic Gaming says, I'm close to 40k subs. I am indeed, yeah. Um, yeah, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah. And my, there uh, you are. Where my, are. my previous... Uh, friends that I used to go exploring with, they're probably going to go past... I actually started them off on the channel, Sam and Jess, and they are going to accelerate past me. I think I think it's because uh, Jess has got a nice arse. So, uh, and, and it's made use of in the videos. But there we are. I'll, I'll, I'll go and get a sex change and get a nice arse, and then, you know, my... Uh, my my videos will do a lot better then. We'll make them about my arse instead of urbexing. So you, you can you can or tell you A, could A, carry A W approves making... wholeheartedly of this of this message. <laughs> yeah. Or you could uh, carry on making decent videos about actual fact and things like that. Yes. Yeah. I think um, I think we'll just carry on doing what we're doing. Yeah. So I'm not going to I'm not going to drag you into the controversy, but uh, um, you know, with all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, it, yeah I, I think I'll s stay out of that one. No, no. But I, I was I was just going to tell the people in the channel, right? ALWs are not having anything to do with this controversy. He's not going to comment, okay? But um, uh, there's um, there's a recent video where they went to Croatia, and I just thought, oh my god, the the lack of taste in what what was done there was they did did an inter a very good introduction. It was like you know we're here at a concentration camp and people were and it's very somber and it's like you know there's sort of music and there's pictures of you know people you know obviously in a lot of grief and all this is like going on the screen. It's been it's described and and you're going right okay yeah so it's building this big picture and then it's like cuts to Sam and Jess and Carl in a swimming pool going hey yeah everybody hey yeah oh this is great this is yeah and I'm like uh okay hmm. whatever yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah yeah whatever mm. yeah there's a type you know put put uh, put your funny your, your sort of like funny videos and stuff like that you know don't put them in with uh with a concentration camp, um, yeah. 
but that's just that's just my <laughs> that's just my feeling. You know, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just a minority. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. I went to Sopot concentration camp in Poland, and I have my camera. I took a few photos for myself, but I didn't film anything. Just didn't. You know, sometimes you just don't want to. Just think. Yeah, I think I'll. You know, just respect the place that I'm in. Yeah, and not actually film it to make a production out of because you're really sort of making a production out of mass murder. So yeah. I didn't really fancy that. Well, I think you've got to... But tr- that's just my take. Yeah. I, I didn't feel, like, comfortable um, sitting on the... What's it called? A bone throne in the Paris catacombs. Mm. Uh, you know, and it's kind of like I hovered above it, but I just didn't want to just like go whoosh and just land myself right down because I mean these are people's bones, and I know there are millions of people's bones down there, but it it still to me, it, you know, we're we're looking at these things, but we're actually walking across. Um, it feels like cork, and it's actually just powderized bones. So we're walking on the floor, and we're walking on people's remains. And then people are, you know, making chairs and things like this out of people's bones, and I'm just like, mm. you know, you know, it, it's been photographed by a lot of people. It's very famous, and I'm glad I saw it. But I just didn't know if I wanted to sort of like, you know, do anything that was going to damage that or sitting on people's bones and things like that. You know, it's just one of those. Everyone's got a different outlook on it, but um, yeah, I just think, uh, you know, when it when it comes to things like, you know concentration camps and things like that you've got to you've got to treat tread carefully you know with what you do because you know people will pick you up on it and it's one of those you don't want to end up like another jake paul like here i am in the forest where everyone kills themselves oh look we found a body folks ha 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 and then laughing you know and it's like <laughs> Right. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and he got he got yeah. really pulled over the coal for that. It's just like, right. yeah. Um, yeah, I've not seen that. I yeah, know, know I, about that one. I'm being yeah. asked, what are my thoughts on proving Demon's latest video? Um, my thought is, well, I actually gave him the location for that, um, and I was like, oh, they found that. Well, they went and saw some bones in um, a crypt. But they did start picking him up and messing around with him and things like that, I think. I haven't watched the video. Um, and they also called the police. I don't know, they just left it left it alone, really, but whatever. Um, didn't see the need to ring the police. Police weren't interested anyway. They were like, well, what do you want us to do about it? It's a, it's a crypt. You've gone in a crypt, you've seen some bones. And now you want, you want us to come and, what, like lock the door up or something? You know, it's, it's got nothing to do with us. <laughs> We're the police, like I mean, you know, we're not the like um, crypt, crypt closing security service or something. You know, we're not like um, crypt caretakers. Ring nine 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 for crypt caretakers. We'll come and, you know, tidy it up for you and close it up. It's like, yeah. Mm. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I I personally wouldn't have wouldn't have rung the police, but I don't know what was going through their minds. You know, they probably like got themselves wound up. I'll have yeah. to watch the video. I'll have to watch it. I heard about it from a lot of people who went like why have they why have they called the police? That's what people told me and I was like, I don't know why they called the police. I I don't know. <laughs> it's it's not like they <laughs> it's not like they no, found I've something. I've not seen the video. Yeah, because I mean Danny and his missus found some real bones and they called the police and that was a real thing, apparently. <laughs> Well, but you always have to take everything with Danny with a pinch of salt. But he swears blind, you know, that it was it was a real situation, and the police did turn up and all that. But you know, um, because he does so much stuff where it, you can't, you know, it's entertainment. It's not like reality videos. These are they're created videos for entertainment purposes. Yeah, you know, it's entertainment. Yeah, you know, yeah. so you so you've got to. Like even the police turning up, then I'm scratching my head, going, "Is that real? Mm. Is that their mates? Is that a real police car? Is it? You know, it's like what, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it becomes very hard. Yeah, that it? line between and it's only like watching EastEnders or something. It's entertainment TV. It's not what I do, but I respect what they're doing. Yeah, that's fine. It's like you know, 
Dan and his ghost hunting and spirit boxes and stuff. People yeah. do that. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But that's it's only like what's on TV. Yeah. Anthony Wilkinson is saying Danny is 100% fake. Well, that's the thing. He admits that he creates the videos. He doesn't make any bones about it. He, he doesn't sort of like try to pull the wool over people's eyes. But the thing is, because all of his videos are like that, you know, when he when he says like, oh, look, we found a real body and we had to call the police. And he's like, eh, it's, it's just another another contrived video, you know, and I. I don't. I don't really care if it is or it isn't. You know, it's an interesting video. It got me watching yeah. to see what happened. You know, and um, yeah. yeah, but Thomas yeah. watches Dan Dixon. Mm. Yeah, he loves it. He, he finds it really entertaining because he knows it's sort of safe. Yeah. And you know, people. It was, I don't know. He likes it. I watch it. I watch his lives. So entertaining. It's entertaining. Yes. That's what it's all about. Whereas you look at, I don't know, um, Sub X or IKS, it's like serious documentary style. It's just different Different channels do different things, and that's just what they do. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, it's uh, he's, a, he's a nice enough chap, and uh, like all the others who are doing these videos, you know, it's uh, they've all got their own little slants, and, like, sometimes they put on a hat where they're sort of like you know, in entertainment mode. And then sometimes they put on a hat where, you know, they're, they're doing genuine explores, you know. But I, I always think it's uh, it's hard to see where the line is then, you know, unless you specifically ask, you know, is this a real video, you know, or is any of this uh, f been, been made up, you know, for entertainment purposes, then you, you know, uh, you, you've got a bit of a t sort of hard time working it out. So, Bucharest Guided Tours, thank you for your donation. There we go. That was that was the ones that are Streamlabs. They come up with a firework. So, uh, and uh, speaking of which, actually, yesterday I was walking the dog, and it was dark, getting dark, and uh, I saw this thing spewing out, um, spewing stuff out in the sky. And I know what it was, because I've, I've seen the, the company. They've got uh, two gliders. And the two gliders, they, they're motorised gliders, and they fly and do um, uh, aerobatics. And they actually fire fireworks out of the side and sparklers and things like that out so they can produce a, a glowing sparkler stream and they can make shapes in the sky. And I was watching that. Um, it wasn't that far away. It was sort of over devices, and I live about six miles away, but you could quite clearly see them doing this. And, uh, yeah, so that was quite interesting. You ever yeah, seen that's something different, isn't it? Have you ever seen one of those? Definitely. No. Nope. Nighttime displays Never. with gliders. You know, is wow. Yeah, they're actually do it's because they're they're going upside down and loop the loops, and it's doing a lot of loop the loops and loop the loops and loop the loops, but at night time. Yeah. So you know that's that's quite a skill, really. Yeah, that reminds me of the the long exposure shots from back in sort of the Battle of Britain. You know, you could see them all like the the all the different things going on in the sky obviously a different context but yeah i remember the long exposure shots i've read him seen in books and things uh so yeah sort of doing it with chaff and flare and fireworks and things yeah that, that looked pretty pretty awesome mm. is that for like a football show or something like half time show or was it for a wedding or well, Devizes isn't big enough to have a stadium or anything like that, so it was probably some sort of organised display for um, Halloween, I would imagine. Ah, but I don't know yeah. where they get so the money. up to that, aren't we? Mm. Mm. I thought it was it last night is Halloween? I might, I don't know. No, it's uh, end of the month, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, we, uh, so we haven't come so to it. So it's going to be Saturday next. So in six days' time, am I right in saying that, viewers? Mm. I think that's right. Yeah, I think. Yeah. You know. um, yeah. So, uh, so coming up, yeah, there's a delay on that. I think. I, well, I, I'm going to make a concerted effort now to actually talk about uh, oil rig. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's talk, talk about, about oil, rigs. oil rig. Let's talk about some oil rigs. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it was quite quite interesting going over to that uh, that oil rig. I mean, we, we made the journey over well enough with the boat engine, and uh, then it um, decided it didn't want to start. 
and I think it's because it had overheated. So on the top of the engine, there's a little, uh, well, it's a temperature sensor. It's not a thermostat per se, but it's a temperature sensor. And when it gets to a certain temperature, it just cuts the connection so that the engine can't make sparks anymore. And then once, um, thank you, Catherine, for your donation. Late to the chat, she says. No, there's no excuses. Goodness. <laughs> um, but we, we uh, well, I, I put this, um, took this leg off it so that it was then um, not, it was probably shorting out. I think when, but what it is, it shorts it out. So I took it off and lo and behold, suddenly we're getting spark. It, it fired up and I was able to go for about a minute until the engine just went like that, and then, God, it wouldn't turn over at all. It was completely seized. Completely nipped. Absolutely oh, gone. Dear. Yeah. So, uh, oh dear. Yeah, I've just given it to my mate who's mechanically minded. He might want to sort of take it apart at some point, but yeah, I'll just get another one. It was a, it was an engine that came with the boat when I originally had it, but uh, didn't have a working uh, pull start, as many of them don't. You know, so I had to manually start it every time and always kind of rough run, but eh, yeah, I'll go and get another, another one, it'll be easier. Once them two stroke engines get to a certain point, it is, well, you certainly won't want to be out at sea with one anyway. You want something just right. So, what did Steve Ronin buy you then? He bought you another engine. He bought another. Or are you saving that for the next? You saving that for the next well, video? Well, I can tell people about it, but yeah, he bought um, because I mentioned that he bought a vid, uh, an engine at the end of the video. Um, paid three hundred and ninety quid, but I mean, like he really wanted to get on the oil rigs because he'd come over from the states and it was going to be the highlight of his uh, trip. And then uh, you know we were we were screwed. And I did say to him, I said, well, look, maybe the maybe the the best thing to do here would be to find some sort of lo local boat bloke who will take you over there for 100 quid or something, you know, take you and bring you back. I said, even if it costs 200 quid, I said, because it's probably going to cost a bit more for an engine. So, uh, but in the end, I found an engine, which was, believe it or not, was down the road from where we were actually uh, putting the boat in the water. It was like five minutes drive. So um, when I went there, the, the, the chap said, oh, you sound Welsh. Where are you from? And I said, oh, from the Ronda. And he said, oh, I'm from the Ronda. And I said, really? And he said, yeah, yeah, Pentra. And I said, well, I'm from Ton Pentra, which is the next village. So it's like literally like within, oh. you know, like t five minutes walk. Like, so I'm in Scotland in Cromarty, you know, yeah. and uh, and I meet somebody who sells me a boat engine who lived literally, you know, a couple of minutes walk from where I lived in, in South Wales. Crazy. Oh, you That's meet people like that. that. Mm. Is that engine a good runner then? It is a good runner. It uh, it starts with a very light pull, and uh, you're probably <laughs> you probably have experience with this. I've got a. You said you did stuff on Mariner boat engines. Mm. Yeah, well, I got a Mariner, and they are heavy beasts. Then they're, they're yeah. not light. They are heavy. Yeah, they are no. real solid bits of kit. But unfortunately, they make the bloody the pull plate. You know, to pull it out of plastic as a lot of companies do. Uh, now, there's a nasty recoil you get on sometimes on two strokes, mm. and uh, you've got to kind of pull it up till it gets tight, and then pull, and sort of like... But the thing yeah. is, it can still catch the uh, catch the, the thing and pull your hand back in and nearly break your fingers. And Yeah, it will. Mm, not very nice. So uh, I just decided I won't really, in the... Uh, in the mood for using that engine anymore and that was one of the reasons why i was like well my my that big rubber boat you know that the, what i call it the big bitch that one needed a 40 horsepower and to get the engine onto it was like a nightmare and getting it started manually was not too bad um yeah but it was i'm, I'm glad to see the back of it now to be honest yeah tristan thomas says lifeboats use it use mariner yeah well they, they seem solid but uh you know, those bloody starters being made out of plastic. I mean, you know, nah, they're not going to last. You, you you, you, get a nasty kick from that and the bloody, it just breaks off the legs on the, the head and then that's it. So, mm. Yeah, this is it. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you need that reliability and you want something that if you're going from Wales up to Scotland, you don't want to be humping a 
a mariner in the back of your car and a rib and all your gear for however many days you spent up there. Yeah. Yeah, it's you want something light and reliable. Yeah. Well, I've got a, a, a four-stroke now, which electric starts, and uh, that's not bad. Oh, posh. Yeah. Very posh. Yeah, well, that, that um, yeah. one that Steve bought is a four-stroke as well. But it, it likes to be stood upright, apparently, or at least at an angle. Yeah, they don't like being laid down. No. If you lay them down, that, they don't like that at all. Yeah. Yeah, just smoke and cut out and pop and bang. Yeah, it's... Um, you need... It's getting it upright in your car. It depends how high it is. But yeah, if you lay it down in your boat and then want to use it on a cold morning on a beach, nah, they ain't gonna like that at all. Yeah. So I've uh, so oil rigs, oil rigs. Yes. So we got out to the oil rig and uh, then this engine seized. Um, but I drifted away, as people saw in the video. I drifted a little bit. Only sort of like maybe one mile an hour current or something like that, but five minutes, maybe ten minutes or something like that. It took me forty minutes to row back against the current, you know, because I'm only doing like one mile an hour, and you know the current is maybe doing one mile an hour. So you're practically standing still against the current. So you really gotta. Uh, so you you saw this the way Dan Dixon was was going crazy with his rowing. Well, I had mm. to do that because I was looking back and I was like, I'm not moved, and I was just like, you know, no. and it was like, look back again, and it still hadn't moved. So in the end, I was like, ah, to 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 get back to the uh, oil rig, and I was really knackered at that point, and I was thinking, boy, we we really have to think about getting off here. And I was just about ready to say, I'm not, I, I'll am not. just forfeit the Explore because we need to get in the boat. But when I got up there um, to get Dan to say, look, I think we really need to be thinking about getting back, otherwise we're going to be in the dark. And Dan was like, nah, Matt, no, come on, you've got to do an Explore, you're here. And I'm like, and I'm just thinking every time something like this happens, we end up in the bloody dark, you know, rowing in the dark or riding a boat back in the dark and it's happened to me a few times now you know i've literally no lights on the boat whatsoever in the dark just like yeah. like yeah this is good isn't it yeah. hour later coming back from red sands in the dark with uh uh glenn you know and he was on a he was on a jet ski in the dark and i'm in a boat in the dark and we're just going <laughs> vroom, like that right and it's just like it's crazy Crazy, crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Mm. Um, it's all right if you're powered, but when you're rowing as well, that's. I, that's I don't grim. recommend two and a half hours. I don't recommend nah. anyone try it. It's it's disconcerting because you just think that you're not going to get back. You know, it's like God, this is never yeah. ending. And yeah, I really wouldn't. Um... <laughs> What's uh, Punch's couches on about? Oh, my God, I don't think they're gonna let you have that comment in, are they? Oh no, they, they did. They did. They let you have that comment in. <laughs> so yeah, what right. What did he say? <laughs> Pig something club. I don't get it. Mm, I don't get. I don't know what he's talking about, but there must be some no. elements in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm. it's funny though. I've yeah. one in the chat. Well, it's Andrew Kiwi says replace the rubbing rubber cooling impeller in the motor. It's probably what killed your old motor. True, but the way you know that your impeller is working is when you start the engine. You see the water coming out of the what they call the P tube, um, and then it yeah. just lets you know that you're getting pressure, so that it's circulating around the system. Yes, that's what the impeller is for. If you notice, when I start it, I actually I think I say the impeller's working because it's like I can see the water coming out of it. So I'm like, oh, we're good to go. But it was rough running, rough running, going over there. Now, when we got over there and I got it started a second time, no, no water. So I think the impeller had become damaged at that point, which might be to do with heat or something. But yeah, there was. I think there's a lot of little things going on with that engine. So, um, But of course, once you seized it, probably got a scored barrel. Might not be worth it, worth messing around with at that point. They're not. They're not once you get to a certain once you get to a certain point with them it's just put it put it in the bin mm. and start again. For like you say, for three, four hundred pounds, by the time you buy a new piston for it, mess about for two, three days rebuilding it, it's it's not worth it, unfortunately. 
Uh, I don't want to sort of join the bandwagon of the throwaway society, but with a boat engine, when it can leave you sort of stranded like that again, because it probably will fail again, and it will be when you're out at a fort somewhere, and it's a two and a half hour row back. Yeah. For three, four hundred quid, just buy a new engine. Yeah. And that's obviously, Matt, you know that, but it's for anyone watching. Like you said at the end of your oil rigs video, you're doing it so people don't have to. The sea is not forgiving. It really isn't. Yeah. Um, you guys were lucky. You had the right kit with you, and you've got some experience. Other people in little dinghies and that. I mean, look at Newquay Beach and stuff down in Cornwall. How many inflatables cause major incidents and they have to get the lifeguards out for people every summer. Mm. And that's just... You know, just off Perrinporth, and they're having to get people out to rescue them just on a little inflatable. It's yeah, yeah not fun, not fun. Hmm. Um, I was just thinking now, uh, that engine will be good to take out with me on my other boat as a spare in case I have a problem with my mm. my other engine, but then it would have to be laid down because it is literally going to be you know, sort of sitting there in the boat. I could maybe put it back on the tramp transom near the other one just sort of like up but um would it be a good idea if that's not getting used a lot to just drain the oil out of it because then it can go on its side then can't it yeah if you preserve it yeah yeah so if you yeah if you sort of win if you winterize it and then store it in a decent environment it'll be fine yeah but i was thinking drain the oil out and then if i do take you with me because it you know it'll, it'll have uh, an easy way to fill the oil back up. I could just have a little container of oil with it and just fill that up and then it's ready to go, sort of thing. Mm. Rather than messing around, you know, with uh, not being able to keep it upright. You know, I can just chuck it in the boat sideways then. Yeah, it's a thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, well, this is it. Mm. So, yeah. We... So was that, a, was, was that a jack-up barge then, or what What was no. that oil rig? What? No, that, that was actually a floating rig. And what they do with those ones, they, uh, they've they got these chains which are actually in the water as we as we see them. So they can actually release these chains and uh, they, they put them out at an angle and then it basically holds the, uh, the thing in place. But, but when you get waves, it will pull those chains and, and then, then there'll be enough free movement for the, for the whole thing to rock. Now... I've seen footage, which um, I could show you, actually. I'd like to see if I bring up a piece of footage and uh, scare the shit out of people, because this is why I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't want to work on an uh, oil rig, um, if this is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, this is basically exactly the same type of oil rig that uh, we were on. It's the same sort of type. You know, it's got different colours and things, but generally, I think you're looking at something that's very similar. Um, and this is in heavy, heavy seas. Okay, here we go then. I'll sh share this with you. Uh, I won't share the audio. Um, or should I? Well, maybe I could. Yeah, I'll share the system audio. Right. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right, you should be able to see this now. So watch this. This this is. Um, look at the size of the waves. And they float. Can you see that, ALW? Yeah, yeah, that's your when you sat down for dinner. Yeah. And uh, you sort of look away, and then you look back, and your knife and fork have gone. And yeah. You go for those, and then you plate of hot dinners down your front. Yeah. And that's what that's what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those oh, swells yeah. you're getting there. Oh, just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Can you imagine the, the workshop you went in where all these stores, all the nuts and bolts and everything like that? Flying They're around. They're just in racks, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's when you get a big, it's when it goes up there, you go bang, and everything just goes everywhere. I think, oh, I've got to tidy all that up now. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely crazy, that. Yeah. It's or actually shame. trying to work in it. Mm. You know, doing putting a pile down or whatever they're doing at the time uh, with those, you know, the big gantry cranes they were using, trying to lift something up and everything is flying Swing. about. That's 
yeah. you'd have to screw yeah. screw the crane and everything would have to be screwed down tight because it would be going for a walk otherwise and yep. uh, anyone trying to walk around on the gantries underneath I mean a wave could come up and just take them that's it just like slosh them out yeah go on yeah, I would imagine yeah, not good. you wouldn't be you wouldn't be allowed to walk out on the deck unless you had uh, two people with you and you were all, you know, connecting yourself on to like you would have to walk like um, with a harness on and connecting yourself from point to point as you go down because yeah. you know you just couldn't risk coming out uh, with and that's why you see those hatches you know those doors are like uh, batten down hatches and they tighten on and they yeah. pull the door tight so that it's water sealed because i mean there's a risk that like the the whole you know a big wave could come over the whole bloody rig you know it could be that bad at some point i mean you can't you can't move them quickly so if it decides that a hurricane is coming through you know then that's it yeah and off scotland it gets off scotland in winter it gets very choppy mm. very choppy indeed yeah yeah so am I correct? Uh, correct. You you used to be submarines, didn't you? Yeah, on surface. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, you, well, you've done maybe, surface yeah. boats as well. Did hmm. you? Were you on yeah. submarines? Yeah. You yeah. were. Yeah. I mean, they're pre they they they're pretty good because they when they go under, they don't suffer all that shit, do they? They can just go down, and then you don't get so much of the the wave problems. It's it's like all of that affects surface yeah. boats really. A submarine is kind of just ploughing through nice and gently underneath all that crap yeah once you're under it's all right but submarines when the surface you know when you come in when you're off the surface to come alongside they're horrendous because they aren't built to be on the surface you know it's um in the name and it's sub under marine water underwater mm. they're not built to be on the surface when they're when they're raised uh they're they just bob about like a cork it's horrendous mm. um yeah, surface ships are surface ships are good, but um, yeah, they used to do, they still do, I think. Uh, they call them JMC, which is Joint Maritime Course, where which is like a training serial for foreign navies. So all different navies used to congregate off Glasgow in Scotland, uh, out at sea, um, sort of northeast, uh, northwest corner of Scotland in winter. Uh, it's bad really bad uh under foot swells trying to work through that and fight a fight a you know a war was very difficult to do some of the upper deck equipment used to just get literally torn off you know like a fixed ladder that's welded to the ship it'd be there one night you'd go to it the next day it'd just gone just t literally torn off by the waves so that's how powerful the sea is yeah so you wouldn't want to be on the deck. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> mm. Did you did you you've been out in some of those like hundred foot wave jobbies then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Atlantic crossing, the, they call it the pond in the navy crossing the Atlantic. That's just a huge expanse of sea. Once once you're hundred miles into it, it's just massive there's nothing else and it really makes you appreciate how big the world is because it's all you can see um and once the wind gets up it is just swell after swell after swell and it's just massive wave after massive wave and even on aircraft carriers you have to sort of tie everything down you know you your micro everything whatever you've got around it has to be like bolted to the floor because otherwise it'll just you'll go up on, on a wave and it'll just smash itself to bits or hit someone or anything. Yeah, the, everything needs to be tied down. Mm -hmm. Call it lashing down. Yeah. Well, I, I use my limited knowledge of the day afterwards because that that um, trip that we just went on over to the oil rigs there was idyllic. I mean, it was so calm. Even I said, wow, you know, this is amazing. Like, you know, we've, we've really picked a lucky day. You know, I was thinking to myself... Well, it's a lock, isn't it? So it's an inlet from the sea. Um, it's it's obviously a river coming down into it. So it's a river, but it becomes a lock and then it goes out to the sea. Uh, but maybe because it's a long, thin lock, the wind is not going to be travelling enough to get these waves up. 
and I was thinking, well, if they come off the hill to the north or to the south, so if you imagine it's going along like this, if the wave, if the wind is coming north or south on a lock, you'll be okay. But if it's coming east or west along the lock, then there's time for waves to kind of move the, move in. And also, if it's coming from the east, then it has the inlet side for the sea. So the waves will already be up to swell coming in, whereas if it's coming from the west, it'll be coming down the river end, which there's not going to be any swells and you're just going to get minor ripples going back out to the sea and you know all the swells will be from the sea outwards but not where you are so I kind of worked all this out and it's like on the day that we were we were there the first day winds were negligible and they were coming from the west on the um, the next day they were coming from the east so they were coming in from sea and they were a little bit stronger and oh boy, was it a completely different scenario. Yeah, you only need four knots of wind in the opposite direction. It changes everything. Yeah. It just makes it horrendous. And it was it was quite something because at the shore, it wasn't too bad. You know, I was thinking, oh, this isn't going to be too bad. And as you get out, it's getting rougher. And then you're getting closer to the oil rig and it's getting pretty rough. And about... The, the maximum point of nastiness was at the rig. It was like as if they put it there at a line where it was the worst. And yeah. I, I was thinking, if the engine cuts now, we've got problems. We've got real problems. Mm -hmm. um, so I was you know, well aware that we would easily get in touch with the harbour master because we were very close to the, to the harbour master on radio, so they would definitely hear mm -hmm. us. But it's like how quick yeah. somebody could get out to us is another thing. And and these waves were quite big. I mean, we're talking like five foot swells, which for a small sib is is you know, it's big. Um luckily it's big enough. Big enough, yeah. And the um uh the period, which uh not not in the feminine sense, but uh time sense, it's a period between the waves is um all important because if you've got five foot waves but like 20 seconds between them the swell is going to be quite gentle taking you up over a long period of time and down what you've got to watch out for is when the period is condensed so then they come up and down up and down up and down very close to each other that's when they'll just probably come over into the boat or you you go very steeply up them at, a, at such an angle it could flip you over you know so anyway it was a 10 second period i think it counted which was just about on the right level for that sort of size of wave to be able to manage um but when we got on around the side of the oil rig we were going five foot up in the air and five foot down trying to meet this surface that we had to get off onto so it's like i just said well look we just have to go for it i mean we'll just time it and when the boat comes up you jump and when the boat goes down you wait and then the next person gets ready and the boat comes up and you 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 go for it, you know, and it's like that's what we had to do. So all three of us jumped off like that. Then I had the rope for the boat, and it was literally like the boat's down there, and we're looking over the edge. The boat's down there, and then the next thing you know, the boat's up right by you, you know, and it's like the wave. So it's literally like up in the air, you know. So I said, well, we'll just pull it on board now. So we just waited for a wave and just pulled the boat straight on board. We didn't have to lift it. It was that's just right. like just push, just pulled it straight on, and uh, then we tied it up. Um, because there were waves obviously com coming onto that uh, platform and we went in and did uh, what we had to do and I said well this is where my my knowledge and I, this is why I say to people don't go trying to do what we do because it looks easier than it actually is right there's a lot more thought has gone into some of this than you might be aware now I knew that you have these changes in the tide so you know it goes three meters high or five meters high tide and then it'll go come down with time. It'll come down, you know, six hours later, it'll be, tides will be going in, then tides will be going out. So every six hours, it'll sort of fluctuate, yeah? Um, is it six or 12 hours? 12 hours, isn't it? Uh, 12. 12 hours, yeah. So it goes slack twice. Yes. So the slack tide is the important thing because I've seen this um, a number of times. When the tide is coming one way, you're getting all these swells you know, and then when you get the slack tide, the swell's calm. So it's not going in or out anymore. It's between the in and the out. But you get this little moment, and I I think I've found it out to be like about anything 15 minutes of calm time. 
you know, at, at the top of a swell, but it starts to come, it starts to calm down. And you've got 50 minutes of calm time and then it comes back in. But that's just my guesstimation, what I've like worked out from seeing mm. things in the past. So I was very doubtful that we were going to be, it was going to be an easy job to get us back on the boat with all these huge waves. It was one thing getting off it, but getting back on it, whole different kettle of fish. That was a lot, would have been a lot harder. But because this swell period was coming, I said, well, if we, if we are absolutely solid on the time here, we get on exactly at the right moment, the waves will calm. And it seems like I was right because it was like all this horrible stuff that was there just calmed down. I said, right, let's go. So it was like pedal to the metal and, and just get yeah. the hell out of there and start going back towards shore. And of course, behind us then, 15 minutes later, it probably would have been quite rough like it was before, you know, and it would have been that sort of roughness. But because we'd made it nearly back to the shore, it was very calm near the shore and we, we didn't see any of that crap. But it would have been behind us. We just didn't experience it. But it's just like knowing knowing those those tide tricks, and I think that um, I think that this is what uh, boat people used to do. Sorry, it's my phone. It's people sending me messages. Ah. I don't know what they are. They telling me anything important? Bloody how? Let's check the chat. Somebody sending me. Somebody's just sent me money. Also, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah? Money's just entered my bank account. But I don't know why. Um, yeah, Melissa Jones Paranormal says, Matt, check PayPal. Thumbs up. Oh, right, okay. Let's see what's going on then. I need to get another beer as well. Oh, oh, it's me. I transferred money from PayPal. Just took That took a long time to come in. Bloody hell, I did that this afternoon. We had instant PayPal transfer money. So, yeah, oh well. Hmm. So, um, yeah, we were very lucky to be able to get back on day two because it was completely different. The, the, and I've heard a lot of stories from people who were saying, you know, you get somewhere on a boat and then the wind picks up and it changes very quickly. So being on a small boat, like that tiny little boat, is a whole different kettle of fish to being on a much bigger boat that can oh, handle yes. the waves, you know. So, you know. It is, but having a small boat where you said you pulled it, you pulled it in, yeah. you pulled it on board. Yeah. That's a big thing because even with the best row, if you've got them swells like pulling tight, you know when it pulls tight, you can you can easily rip a harness or, and then you lose your boat, and then you're really in bother. Then yes, you know pulling it on board and getting it somewhere safe. You think right. Because the biggest thing that would be in the back of my mind was once you got on, that's fine. But then you've got Steve and uh, was it Dave you had with you? Yes. From, yeah, you got Steve and Dave to look after, thinking, right, they're going to go off and do their explore. All I'd be thinking of is we've got to get back off this rig and back ashore now. Yes. And that would just be in the back of my mind the full time. It was. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was yeah. I was saying to them right in in ten minutes now, you know. So I I, I rounded him up and I said, look, we re it's you are not going to believe how important it is that we get back. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait yeah. twelve hours for the next slack tide. You don't want to do that, yeah. right? So you you yeah. make sure you get out, you know. And I was like, right, you got ten minutes now. So literally, fair play to them, you know. They were there, and it was like right, we were all quickly getting down the. The thing and I said, like, look at it, it's crazy, isn't it? And I said, that won't last long. It's 15 minutes of calm, right? And it's going to go womp and it's going to be horrible mm. again, you know. So, yeah, we yeah. were so lucky. Well, can I can I leave you for a second? I have to go and do a man thing, um, including getting a <laughs> can of beer because I, I have kidney problems. That's what I'm going to put it down to, but yeah, drinking beer as well. So, yeah, well, it's the beer, isn't it? It, it ends up wanting to go somewhere eventually. It does, and with um, me, I have I have no ability to kind of like hold on to it. When my body says you must go, I have to go immediately because otherwise, <laughs> it can get pretty. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you can use your imagination. So, um, yeah, that won't be for very long though. Thankfully, I'll have these stents taken out of me, and then my uh, my body can hold on to things. Then, which it, it's having trouble with at the moment. Anyway, maybe too much information. I don't know. I'll see you in a second. We can, do you want to keep them <laughs> occupied? <laughs> yes. Soon as that I... wasn't very secret from the secret vault. That was very uh, no. informative. <laughs> I'll see you in a second, man. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, hello, I'm not Matthew. And uh, 
I'm on full screen, so yeah, no pressure. Let's check the chat out. I could do some shameless plugs. Um, so we've got 125 likes, and oh, we need to start hitting that like button. See how far we can get it up. There's 264 people watching. We've only got 125 likes. Can we sort that out? When Matthew comes back with his little lager. Uh, so let's check the chat out. <laughs> Noel Gainsford. Yeah, that's the one. Um, hello, Landroma. Hello, Barry Little. Um, let's just check the chat for any questions. If you've got any questions for me, just put them in. Uh, ALW, can you sell Matt? Send him £10 over. Yeah, I will do. Uh, did you say over because it was the end of your sentence or just over? Send him £10 over. That was a family guy joke. Just looking for questions. Dream of your child. Thank you, Melissa. Sorry, this isn't very interesting. I'm just checking the chat to see if there are any questions. Ooh. I think Matthew's back. I am back. Yeah, you got a few more likes. I told them all to hit the like button. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I actually, yeah. I'm just going to check now to see how many, how many are in because I uh, often forget to. Two hundred and fifty-six. That's Ooh. good. Yeah. Not bad, it's is it? Good. For... I don't know if it... Yeah, it's good. Not bad for um... a Sunday evening. What's the time now? 11 o'clock. Oh. oh, urban legend. Might be important. Let me just... Oh. I reckon. He's just rung off. Great, thank you. Let was just... he? Let me see what he said. Oh, he might have forgot you was on the live and then what? remembered. Uh... What, what? Hmm. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> I, yeah. Stop talking about uh, the big. <laughs> stop talking about that in the chat. It's naughty. Get us into trouble. Didn't even notice it. No, I don't know. Somebody didn't even is. notice it. Was it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Stop talking about that. People. Yeah. Stop talking about that. Boring anyway. You know, gets us in trouble. We don't want to be. Yeah. We don't want to. We don't want to be algorithmically um, tarnished. So, no. guess yeah. not. Matthew twenty four eight. Cobe twenty four eight. He's talking bloody. Uh, talking bloody religious like things. Oh God. Um, I tell you what, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't need that crap on my channel. Sorry. Yeah, he's getting all. Uh, and God did this, and and on the fifth day, and you will all, you know, you will all learn the truth. Blah. So yeah, we are. Sorry. No, I don't really want that. It's winding everybody up in the channel as well because uh, people don't go and do Is it I... on. A, go and do it on a street corner. You know, go and hold your Bible up on a street corner and go and do do it down there, like you know, and people can walk around you then. But like. You've got a, it's a bit of a trapped captive audience in the chat. They don't really want to be reading that uh, crap. So, uh, yeah. Jackie Jackie Green's just come in with a big blue spanner, so she'll sort them all out. All right. I know okay. Barry Little's in there and Melissa. Mm. Melissa sent you a tenner, by the way. Mm. Which is rather nice. Thank you very much, Melissa. Um, That's very kind. Yeah. There's probably other people have as well. I'm just going to go on my PayPal and see if anything's come through, and I shall thank people. There was there was some chap from the United mm. States earlier on. He sent me seventy quid. So I said, right, oh, I'll, send, wow. I'll send you some uh, send you some bits and pieces for that. But you know, it's like, yeah. Let's go and see if there's maybe right. Exciting. Let's logging into PayPal. There we are. Uh, Diane. Into PayPal. Di yeah, Diane. Thank you for your donation and uh, Mark. I should just say it because I don't know if they, some of these people don't want their names associated with their their names in the. You just read the read the full email address and yeah. postal address out. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Joke. 
and and Mark, yeah. I'll just say Mark, thank you very much for your very very kind donation, um, which was like seventy quid, which is just like whoa. Mm. Wow. So yeah, I've used that to uh, to pay my uh, credit <laughs> thing for PayPal because I got to pay him. I got to pay him seventy quid a month, and that includes the interest. So uh, yeah, paying off my uh, credit card. Um, well, it's PayPal credit. Slowly. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. So it's buying good. buying stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, things to make the channel work better. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's all like Yeah. Uh, camera what was that gear. fancy camera you had on your head for the video? That's on the oil rigs? Three sixty camera. Oh you mean Wasn't it? Yeah, I've I've heard of these. It's like never... it films like this out of this. Thing, I, can, you know, I can just see a. Is that a glove? Yeah. Because your green screen is sort of blurring it out, and there's like fingers. Yeah. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sni sniff that glove. Yeah. Okay. Is that an Osmo thing? Uh, no. What it is? And da, 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 it's a 360 camera. It's an Insta 360. It's the one the police actually okay. nicked. The police. Um, well. They took the, they took a camera like this. Uh, I've got two 360s. The other one didn't have protectors on it. So if you scratch the lens, that's yeah. it. This one, you can actually put plastic protectors on there and it saves the yeah. lens. So I, I've got sacrificial protectors on it now. But yeah, I put it on a yeah. helmet, pa battery pack, because it won't last the distance otherwise. And what it allows you to do, it films 360 degrees and you can release those videos so people can put on a VR headset and they can look around up and down and they can do all that. But what's useful as well is you can actually then pick the angle you want when you get home. So if you wanted to see in front of you, you can you can point it that way. And if you say somebody says, "Oh, look at that behind you," but I'm using the boat and I can't turn around, you know, the camera still sees behind me. All I've got to do is yeah. in the software I just change its angle and look backwards, and you can make you know videos that are just like these now they appear to be facing forwards but it's like you can remotely change the angle you know oh, so that's brilliant yeah through software and uh, i find that quite useful because you never miss anything and later on instead of like a gopro where every time you turn your head you know uh, every movement is going to be recorded a little it'll it'll take the shake out of it but every movement is going to be there it's a slightly lower quality image because it's it's taking 360 degrees and yeah it's filming everything yeah it's taking it but it's it's taking it down to a 5k sensor per side but it's still taking in the edges as well so when you actually take the image you want out of that it's it's cropping into about 2 or 3k on a 5k sensor but you know it's obviously it can move around the the image so um People complain to me, they go, oh, that doesn't look very good. But what they don't appreciate is that if I had a GoPro on my head, yeah, it'd be nice clear footage, but it would be all over the bloody place because I'm cycling a bike or, you know, doing doing various things. And it allowed me to do a shot, which would have been virtually impossible any other way, which was at the beginning, we I, I um, speed up the footage of us going across to the uh, oil rigs. And, and of course, I'm looking around, chatting to people, I'm looking back at the engine, I'm doing all sorts of things, so my head is turning continuously like this. But I am able to say, stay pointed at that object, which is the oil rig. So even though my, my head is doing this and the camera is doing this the whole time, when the I get back home, moving. I can point it at the oil rig speed the footage up and then you just see the oil rig coming and you can see Dan and, yeah. and Josh are moving around like that underneath but the oil rig comes towards us smoothly because I'm locked onto that object and so you can you, there's no yeah. way you could do that shot unless you had a drone you know and sort of like flying it along beside the boat but we're actually in the boat mm. so uh. no it's brilliant mm. yeah good bit of kit then yeah so What's this? Here. The commenter says a a rumor. Oh, oh, and it went it's round. Not. Thanks to Ben's community claiming this, he's fine. Mm, what's all that about them? Mm. What's that then? Claiming what? I don't know. Hmm. 
don't wear that camera when I go for a pee. I have worn it when I've gone for a pee quite a few times. And if you look down, you can see uh, <laughs> you can see my privates hanging out and a pee stream. So I have to be careful, you know. Um, I've had to chop those moments out of the uh, the 360 things, whereas I normally leave the camera running. It's like if if it goes like that. Hmm. Yeah. Urban Legends saying, Matt, how is your friend the base jumper? He's all right. He's in Tenerife at the moment, Jordan. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. I said he's very nice hot out there. He said he's enjoying himself. Yeah, it'll still be warm out there. Yeah. Yeah. You're a lot closer to the equator. Mm. Uh. Oh, some uh, dickhead apparently said RIP Jordan. Oh really? Huh. No, he's he's uh, mm. he's quite happy. He's out there with his um, his parents having a holiday, and keeping out. <laughs> mm. Be drinking acidic beer yeah. and eating almost cooked chicken. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. Good times. Some trolls, isn't it? Yeah. Should we find it? Right. Somebody said that you passed away, so. Um, would you like to tell everybody that you haven't passed away? We'll, get, we'll see if we get a response now. Yeah, yeah just, I definitely got, I got to his mom. phone, so his phone's still alive. So um, His phone's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> we, get a, yeah. we get a response off him now. <laughs> we probably, he'd probably come on, I expect, oh. if, he's, if he's bored. Cause he's, he's Barry's been... blocked him. All oh, right. Not him, the idiot. Whatever that was. Mm. Oh yeah, I mean yes. There's some of them are getting desperate. You know uh, that person whose name I do not mention is going to be in court in November. He's going to be in yeah. court for all his harassing uh, videos and all his threats he's been making. And um, even though he's been, you know, called to come to court, oh boy, has he been sending some really nice, nice threats. On uh, what was it? What was the? I'll right. re, I'll re, I could read it to you directly, actually, so I don't get it wrong. Um, yeah, let's just uh, see if I can find it. Uh, oh, yeah, here we are. Um, cry to the police; they won't get to you in time. Trust me. Um, go get a harassment order. I'll pay others to come and upset you. You have been warned. It make you've made this personal now, um, yeah. So it's like you know direct threats, you know, to come round my house. And he says, "What did he say? Something like, um, 'I'd be, I'd be hap happening, I'd, I'd be happy to be sitting in a prison cell, no, knowing that I've totaled your flat.' Wow, great. So. We're going for round two then, are we? So after all the crimes you've already committed, you want to go and commit a load more to get pulled up by the police again, right? Great. Well done. Mm. It's ongoing, this. Yeah, ongoing. Oh, you know to find them, don't you? They do seem to be attracted to me for some reason, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been ringing, yeah. ringing my phone like it just gets blocked. I don't even it doesn't even ring. It just goes straight through to block. Mm. But he's ringing using two or three numbers I've identified are his now. So it's it's all no. listed on the phone. Like four in the morning, five in the morning. I mean, like what? What? Really? You you really are a sucker for punishment. You know, you are absolutely going to get you know, mm, in trouble for these things <sighs> with the police. Yeah. Yeah. Sue Lindsay says zero intelligence by the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get one of them nighttime clocks. Pompey explores says, "Is it open court?" Yes, it is. And um, yeah. So, I, I'll I'll have to take some advice about you know whether to put the details out you know um, it, so people can turn up. But yeah, it's going to be an open court case, and uh, it's going to be happening in Swindon. So, I guess some of you will be able to find out from from just that little piece of information I've given you, and it'll be happening. Um, I think is it um, 
just got to remember now, 20, no, I shouldn't really say the date, should I? Uh, I shouldn't no, say I the date. Yeah. Oh, hello. Somebody who is apparently dead has, is not dead by the looks <laughs> of it. Hello. No audio. No audio. Is muted? No, no audio. It's not muted on this. No, no audio. No audio. He's 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 alive. Something's wrong with his audio, though, folks. Yeah. Or maybe yes, is a record oh, the... recording of himself that. Oh, he'll, he'll probably come back on now. He's probably got a problem with his phone's audio. Yeah, it was strange, that wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe but, his microphone's dead. But he he's in Tenerife, look, enjoying himself. So yeah, he's fine. There's some sick people out there, isn't there? Saying shit like that. Yeah. Boo, yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 It certainly is. So, but, um, yeah. So, unless that's some, some secret footage I'd recorded of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, actually go to all that effort. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, don't, don't listen to... Uh, crap like that from people i mean i had somebody in the yep. chat earlier on in one of the videos and he was like um he was like oh so when were you when were you there at oh here he comes Just give it hello hello hi yeah i'm still alive um my mic didn't activate for some reason i ain't got any headphones because i'm i'm out having having some dinner at minute but i just joined to say that i'm still alive and well and i'm not dead yeah and and i like the uh i like really the, the mustache <laughs> I, my moustache grows really quick and I had a chance to shave it because like three, if, I, if I don't shave it within three days it's like you know mm. he looks like an Italian so, looks like Mario it's a Mario <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. being yeah, too Olive much of an echo on. coming from a mic is there mm -mm. that's fine oh because I'm on loudspeaker so um, no you sound and fine I thought, like, be... yeah I uh, who do you call it? Um, my mate James called me and said, oh, there's people leaving comments on uh, Valtz's live stream saying you're dead. And then obviously I saw your voice message saying that people <laughs> think I'm dead. So I'm like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> some sad people out there, mate. There's some very sad people out there. Uh, yeah. Well, I just joined to reassure everyone that I'm all right. I need to go back because I've got a dessert. Oh, you know? go and do it. Go and eat your food. But yeah, thank you for letting me know. We're having my Smash dinner it. and I thought, well, I'll just join for people's reassurance. People are saying Rick Jordan, blah, 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 blah. Mm. You know? Well, well, maybe he died and went to heaven. Look, he's in Tenerife. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm a ghost. Yeah. I'm a ghost with an hat on just standing here, just saying. <laughs> yeah. It's a pre-recorded message. Well, yeah, this is where he yeah. sort of like freezes and then it repeats. So we realise it's a repeat then because he starts. He's like, I just thought I'd come on to tell people I'm not dead. No, no, pause, pause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, well I'm gonna have to All go right. and get my uh, get my dessert. I'll I'll catch up with you when I uh, get back to England. You go and get your chest desserts, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. Catch you later. Have a nice <laughs> one. Bye. Bye bye. Oh, he's a star. Yeah, he is. the haunted coachman men uh, commented saying he's on the pull. Yeah. Uh, not the haunted coachman. He's saying that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first computing's on the pole mm. in Tenerife. So maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Who knows? Yeah. Well, he's not dead. We know that. They're saying if La Palma collapses, it will send a five metre tsunami wave to the UK and 25 to the metres to the US, apparently. It's serious. Yeah. Well, we've got to hope that our nuclear power stations can handle that then and we don't turn into a repeat performance of. Uh, Fukushima, because all our nuclear stuff is all on the seaside, isn't it? Because it's like, it's a good place to build a nuclear power station. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, that's no, just totally not going to go wrong, is it? But no. Anyway. no. Yeah, back into politics. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know... Well, I... at least China and France are making them for us now. Well, yeah, and I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't want them to sort of, like, uh, completely... Uh, ruin the United Kingdom if they go wrong. I'm sure they wouldn't sort of like sabotage them in some way. Well, just build them badly. Yeah, you know, because we've, we've left the yeah. EU now, so they're like, oh yeah, right, we will show these English pig dogs. 
you dirty sons of um what is it uh, your mother stunk your, your mother stinks of elderberries yes something like that yeah there's lots of things you're saying that i'm just thinking ah i just don't respond to that <laughs> yeah yeah not you not you yeah. no it's, it's the night joke from uh one of the when they were the, the cast is like um you english kniggets because you can't say knights he's <laughs> kniggets yeah it's uh monty python yeah that's it um is it life of brian yeah. or uh it's one of them answer in the comments please because i yeah. can't remember yeah can't remember but yeah your mother your mother was a warthog and your father smelt of elderberries yeah <laughs> Mm. Yeah, elderberries. You put them in gin. Uh, I think they smell yeah. nice. Because I yeah. fart, okay. I fart in your Jenna direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Till I see something fresh. Holy nah, Grail. No one knows of that thing. So Holy Grail. That's, that's it. One. Yeah, that one. is the one. Andrew Clark, you are the winner. Yeah, I think Barry's off to bed. It is half eleven. Mm. Well, we'll have yeah. to think about doing it soon. But uh, yeah, I would say to people, you know, watch the um, the second instalment of this uh, going back out to the oil rigs, if only to Absolutely. just see how serious the waves are. Because I mean, you know, I was taking a bit of a taking a bit of a risk to get Steve because he paid for the engine, and it's like, but it's it's those sorts of things. Like you you have to know when to call it, and I I was like, well. Let's get him on you, but this might not be very good. You know, this might not be good. And and I was thinking, yeah. right, when I get on there, I'll kind of like try and work this out, you know. And at the end of the day, I mean, sometimes when shit like that goes down, you just literally have to stay on there for 24 hours to see whether the, you know, the conditions get better because, you know, you can't risk coming off. And it's something, yeah, there we are. Your mother was a pig dog, and your father smelt of elderberries. And we are the knights who say knee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, yeah this is just an awesome. Yeah, was it um, that that yeah. n that nun who's called uh, Zoot? <laughs> yeah. What's your name? I am Zoot. Yeah. I watched that for years. Well, I need a wee, so back mm. in a minute. Happens to the best of us. It does. Bring uh, out your dead. Bring out your dead. He's like, I'm not dead yet. He's like, shut up. And he's like, I feel happy. <laughs> you know. So, um, well, more beep, 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 peas. He says, oh, thanks for letting him know. Yeah, that was jo Jordan. Just uh, there we are. There we are. They're all saying, "Yeah, somebody's um, somebody was just ripping into." Uh... Oh, there we are. Right. Uh, so, what else were we up to then on there? Yeah, it was um, it was quite interesting. But I was really glad that we were able to do it and just get it get it done with. And um, Dan was on about like going out and doing stuff the next day with a boat and I just said nah the, the weather was perfect for the Saturday because that's what I said to him we were meant to be doing that all of that you know getting everyone out there and back on the Sunday but I actually called it forward a day because the weather conditions were better on the Saturday so we went up there um, specifically for that reason so Sunday was not a day I wanted to use and there you know, I knew already before we even started, like if we, once that things start moving into Sunday, you're going to have problems. And uh, yeah, I mean, when Dan said to me like, oh, we're going to go off to the sea this time, not even to a lock, to the sea. And I just went, no, absolutely not, Dan. No. And he was like, don't you think it'd be? And I was like, Dan, don't even go there. Don't even go there. The conditions are not right for this right now i mean you know you you would not get me i said if you know you would be stupid to get in the boat and try it and i would i would seriously try and talk you out of it you know if it if it was me and it was your boat you know uh, i would be talking you out of it so but yeah i 
you know, people get quite, they kind of, they, they, they see the goal, but they don't understand the route to the goal, how dangerous it is. They just see the goal, you know, and uh, that's when you've got to step in and say no sometimes. So, did I see uh, ALW coming back in then for a second? But hmm. So, um, yeah, you've got to, you got to know when to say no sometimes. Oh, here he is. Yeah, just saying to um, people about uh, the conditions, I called all that exploring forward for Saturday because Sunday was, was a bad day and I knew that. You know, I, I sort of knew that it wasn't as good as Saturday. Saturday was the sweet spot. So, I, so we all went up there and we were going to do the exploring on the oil rig on the Sunday originally, but I said, no, no, Saturday's the day. Let's do it on Saturday. And then, of course, we were forced into doing something on the Sunday, but I, I knew it wasn't a good idea. And then Dan said to me, after that Sunday thing, he said, oh, maybe we can do something out in the sea. Like, you know, there's a place. And I went, whoa there, cowboy. Whoa, no, 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 no. Not on yeah, your Nelly. Not no. No. You know, because yeah. uh, the sea is, is much, much rougher than even being in a lock. I mean, it's like I'm when colder. you... Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like Plymouth, for example. I mean, you know, it's got a, a big... Like, what do they call it? Because sound, is it? You know, where you... It's it's like a little breakwater. mini breakwater. Breakwater, yeah. Um, but it comes in, it comes in, and that hides a lot of the waves. And then the breakwater takes a lot it of does. the waves off. And um, mm. you know, once you go from that breakwater around the side of it, and you actually feel and see what the sea is doing, you just turn straight back around. You're like, nah, no, no, no. I'm nice and safe in here. Thank you very much. You can keep that sea out there. That's not for me. So, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're going out of there, going out of, uh, they called it, uh, nickname for Plymouth was Guz, and going out of Guz, once you get past that breakwater, even on a big ship that's 4,000 tons and more, you can feel it, you notice when you know when you're down below, and you know you're sailing, you can, ah, oh, yeah, we've passed the breakwater now, you can, you just feel it, I and mean, that's pushing 4,000 tons about, so on a little sort of two or three berth dinghy, you really going to, or rigid inflatable, you're going to really feel it. Um, yeah, yeah. I won't fancy it. Yeah, well, the thing is that oh. that thing is a, is a total inflatable. It's a sib, so you know it's not mm -hmm. really very solid. A rib would be better because it lifts you out of the water a bit, so you kind of ride up above the waves. But in a sib, you're literally there at wave level, you know, and and it's very easy for any wave that's that or higher. To just plonk itself in you know, the sides of the boat, and it can start filling it up fairly quickly, you know, if you're not careful. Yep. So it's not worth messing around with. No, so, no, yeah. no, mm. too old to get wet now. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta you gotta look at the forecasts with this stuff, and if the forecast is yes. nice, veering to nasty. You got to get out and do what you got to do and get back really quick. But you've got to bear in mind if it's ve veering to nasty, it could veer quicker to nasty. It's not likely to get better. It's likely to get worse, and that's the risk. Is yeah. you know, if anything, what you should be doing when you're looking at the forecast is saying it's not bad now, but it's going to be getting nicer. That's the sort of thing you want yeah, to be looking is okay. for. Is nicer. Yeah. You never want to be working towards getting nasty because if it gets up quick, then you're in trouble. So I do that flying the drone. I look at the, I just use like the Met Office uh, app and check the wind speed and what it's going to be doing and what it's going to be like in the next hour. And if it's sort of within tolerance, as in less than 38 knots wind um, and the gusts aren't too bad and getting better, then I'll think, yeah, I'll drone it. Whereas if it's sort of near the end, near the max points, and getting worse, I think, no, I just won't. Um, and actually going out in it physically yourself, you know, you've only got to be out two or 300 metres, and if the wind picks up a bit and it starts raining, it's one, miserable, and yeah. two, gets dangerous, because once all your gears wet, I mean, I saw uh, Dan and uh, Josh, they both had the cameras just out in the open, you know, once your gear gets wet and you're going out to an exploit, you're not even filmed anything yet, once you know, once your mic's wet and all that, it's you know, I mean, they do it as a job, as an actual income, whereas I do it for fun, really. It's a hobby, so um, 
both both ways. You know, they're 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 sort of getting equipment damaged, and the fun sort of goes out of it. Then you wet, then you cold, and I don't know. I don't want to paint a bad picture, but it's, you've got to be careful doing these sorts of things. Yeah, and you know, you get. Uh, I've got waterproof bags. And I've said to people a few times, like, you know, just put your stuff in the waterproof bag and don't bring these big rucksacks because, you know, once you get stuck water sloshing around in the bottom of the boat, I mean, it's happened so many times. And people go, oh, yeah. my bag is soaking. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it is it is what it is. Like, you know, we're in a boat, you're going to get waves. And if it starts raining, I mean, it's not much, uh, not much you can do, really. Oh, Mr. Brady is in as well. Exploring with Brady. So Ooh. yeah, might I, I might send him a thing, seeing if he wants to come on in a minute and bring him on towards the end. But uh, I can't stay yeah, on. Yeah, I've not seen out of Brady for a while, to be honest. I've been a bit. Uh, for anyone watching who thinks I've sort of been out of, I mean, I haven't been on Urban Legend or Carl's lives for a while. Um, I've just been sort of out of it for a, for a bit, just through stuff at home, you know. Uh, Nothing more than that, you know. I'm not getting clicky or all like that. I'm just sort of, you know, yeah. So, um, well, we'll see if he pops on now. I've just sent him the the link. Oh, cool. I know, I know he's out of work. Well, he's not. You know, he's just left work, so he's not uh, you know, okay. unemployed. He's just uh, come out. He's finished his work for the night, so. <laughs> Yeah, shift on. Yeah, it's not P forty five. Yeah, yeah. He's... Well, hopefully not. You might have had a bad day. Well, yeah. I mean, I I always say to people like you know, quit quit your job for Bob. But uh, um, yeah, it is a bit of a joke though because uh, you do need to eat. So um, yeah, I mean, Dan's actually yeah. got his uh, cameras. I, he always talks about this with he buys them with Jessup's. Because he swears by them, and he says their insurance is very good because they don't quibble. It's like they, if you damage it, they replace it, you know. And it's like there's there's no sort of like oh, but you you've got this wet. It's like no, it's any type of damage, it's replaced, you know. And that that sort of insurance. So um, he can literally get his camera just replaced by them if he needs to, and he has had to do it in the past. So um, he recommends yeah. Jessup's. Might cost you a couple of quid more for the camera to buy it from them, but then once you insure it with them as well, you got that peace of mind. So there we are. Rick Corden says he has subbed it to you. You are his dom. And, oh, thanks. And he has he is your sub. Thanks, Rick Corden. Because uh, shameless plug inbound. I'm now only twenty two or four thousand. If the camera will pick that up. I thought you had more than that. Twenty-two, yeah, twenty-two or four thousand. So I thought, yeah, I thought I thought I, I thought you had a lot more than that. I didn't. I just don't keep track of. I think um, IKS have got about the same as me, haven't they? They're about forty k. Uh, IKS exploration. I don't know the answer to that. Oh no, bloody hell! Hundred thousand um, subscribers. Yeah, he's bloody on hundred and seven thousand, Ian. Uh, to be honest, right. Um, this is how quickly it can go. I remember Ian when he was on like 25k. That's when I sort of discovered him. Um, and he just went up and up and up. Because I used to watch, because I was on night shifts and stuff. And I used to watch his vlogs and that during the week, you know. And it'd just be, I don't know, it's not everyone's sort of scene. But it'd make like an egg sandwich. Then he'd go for a walk around over and show you a bank scene. And then show you a bunker and stuff like that. I, I like sort of easy going stuff like that. Whereas some other people like all the drama and stuff. Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> drama and bitching. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm really thinking you, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Present company excluded, of course, yes. Present company excluded, yeah. Yeah, yeah you have had a couple of fiery moments, haven't you, with uh, certain... Anyway, I'm not going into that. Nah, <laughs> Stop talking. Nah, just yeah, rewind, rewind. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll backpedal out of that one. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is really. You know, it's like, yeah, some people, you know, you think they're they're okay, and and you know, you you're making videos with them, and then they sort of like pull a pull a weird one, like, and then they like, you know, take my videos off your channel. I'm like, what? Delete my videos that actually were bloody good videos, like, you know, and I'm like. 
because they're kicking up so much of a fuss, I actually just removed them, I just blurred them out. It takes a long time to blur somebody and take their voice out of a video. It's like hours and hours, but, I, you know, to be... Um, to be honest, I'd rather do it though, you know, because it's like I'm I'm not going to lose a video because somebody wants to just start kicking off, you know, and causing trouble. So yeah, now we have a video that doesn't have them in it, you know, and you'd hardly you'd hardly notice or miss it, you know, because then they're not contributing an awful lot, but they're just sort of in half the shots, you know, and then uh, laughing all the time, yeah. you know, continuously. So you have to remove a lot of the audio. Hmm. Yeah, it's not actually part of what you're filming anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah. Mm. Anthony Wilkinson says he hasn't seen Johnny Webb on you for ages. Well, I I haven't put out the um the links publicly to this one because I didn't know uh, you know, well, it's just easier sometimes if you know who's coming on. Um there we are. Number yeah, one even. fan says please subscribe to ALW. There we are. You will not regret it. Amazing videos, yeah. Um, well, I don't know where much. he is, Johnny Webb, but um, I don't know. Maybe he started sort of like looking into what I was saying and watching watching my videos on the crop circles because he was a big crop circle believer. And I was just like, well, you know, it's right, good to believe, you know, but yeah, you need to know who's making them though, and it, it's not it's not aliens making them. But there may be some sort of connections with that sort of stuff in there, but it's definitely not aliens making them. But, you know, he was kind of like, yeah, but how do you do this? And I was like, told him. And how, well, yeah, but how do you do that? Tell him. I think maybe it's kind of sinking in a bit, you know, maybe it's sort of starting to sink in. So, but I'm yeah. sure you'll he, turn up at, again at some point. Yeah. I need to go to the loo now. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, holding on to it for a little bit, but I'm I'm not going to cause myself pain. I will be back. You need to go, don't you? I will be back. <laughs> Shoot a sec. <laughs> So I've seen in the chat when which said Urban Lad has a video out Subaru. So someone's asking about Urban Lad. Urban Lad, yeah, she was in the Legend chat tonight. So some... no, it's fine. I spoke to uh, I spoke to Urban Lad Yorkshire, Mark. I spoke to him last week. Um, yeah, he's fine. He's yeah, he's fine. Yeah, uh, all is well. Egg salad sandwich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love historical stuff too. Uh, okay. Yeah, people are saying bars. What's that? What's that? It's in the Pigeon Master bars. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. So thanks for everyone who's recently subbed. Appreciate that. Um, what do you want to talk about? Uh, <laughs> been sort of put on the spot again. Where's the okay. I've got a new video out. It's a water emergency bunker. Um, I don't really want to sort of talk about my stuff. It feels a bit rude because um, it's Matt's Matt's stream. Um, <laughs> Pleased he's got another drone. That's good. Uh, I didn't realise how good them Mavic 2 zooms were. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it's got a different camera. Yeah. Um, so I've got the Mavic 2 Pro with the slightly different camera on it. So, the yeah, the zoom feature, that's really good. It was really clear. Yeah. Well, this so is does I've that film in... Been telling people, like, if you put it into 1080p mode, it suddenly mm -hmm. gives you all this, like, extra zoom you can do, which is digital... But because it's using the 4K sensor, which has more pixels, and it's yeah. it's zooming on the sensor, you don't notice it. And yeah. it's uh, it's really good, and it, it gives you this kind of different perspective. You can do this um, uh, Alfred Hitchcock type thing where you're coming towards something and you zoom back and you see the the, the, the sort of like distances change. I think it's called a perspective shift or something like that. And um, mm. you can do those sorts of effects, but. Um, what I think is quite useful, if you're close to an object, like the oil rig, all the other oil rigs will be all away like little specks, you know. But what you can do yes. is you fly further away from the object you're near and zoom into all of them. And then the distant ones, which were specks, 
become pretty much the same size as what you're filming. So now you can see all the oil rigs stacked up close to each other like that, instead of being the oil rig you got, the next one like that, the next one like that, next one like that. You know, they're all kind of like stacked close to each other because it brings those up to a similar sort of dimension to the one you're zooming into, which is close to you. So, um, you know, you can you can bring, you could be looking at maybe um, a church and the seaside, and you can make the seaside visible, where you can see the church in front of you as well visible. But if you just had a normal drone, you could be really, you know, quite close to the church but no matter what you do that seaside is just going to be a very thin line in the distance you know and it's kind of it mm. just brings things closer so that they're all the same size so you can kind of see them a bit better it's a it's a much better effect and that's why i like it you yeah, know definitely. mostly for that you know and yeah it's a great stealth mm. tool as well because on that mode you're getting you're getting about 20 times zoom so you can go up quite high just hover zoom into a military base or something where you know you'd never be allowed to get close to it you know it wouldn't let you fly but you could be you know a mile away from it and you're zooming into it like as if you're right there and i use this to very good That's effect a good feature yeah i use this to very good effect on uh, the salisbury plane because a video that i'm going to be putting out pretty soon i'm going to give people a clue here i went and did <laughs> ready for this folks <laughs> Porton down. Did you? Yeah. He knows. He knows what that is. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google it, folks, if you don't know what that is. But that is uh, interesting. Yeah. That's somewhere <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone do an explore. I've seen news pieces, you know, where it's kind of like they've been invited in. But I just thought, well, yeah. how close can you get to this? thing how can you know could i ride my bike around the, the the edges of it how you know which bits can you go on which bits are you not allowed to go on and i found out some crazy stuff about places that you could fly your drone that were actually it's like a little window like a narrow point and the the point of it you can take your drone off go up really high use the zoom and suddenly like you're right there you're looking at all the buildings and you're sort of like bang you're right there so i was able to legally you know get my drone in really close and also then i thought right well i've droned it why don't i see how close i can get then so i went for a bike ride around the inside of, of all this area um and i actually went into some of the places where they test some of the stuff um by they got a train and i went in there and yeah did some pretty crazy stuff there was a an area of the train i thought i better not go in there because it actually had a skull and it was like it was taped off and it was like a skull on it it was like don't go in here so i'm like oh so they've probably thrown some sarin gas or some you know yeah. anthrax in there and they haven't had time to clean it out so you know probably best to stay out of that compartment but you know yeah i went and did it and i'm gonna put my video out and when i do i just know i'm gonna get a knock on the friggin door unfortunately I just hopefully it's not a kicking the door in type experience, you know. Yeah, the big magic key. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Three a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Bang, smash. So, yeah. I'm just thinking that you know, realistically, my my take on this is I, I drove my car in there as well, which was like crazy, but right into the base, and it's like I I mean I'm, I'm in the video, and I'm like, am I actually doing this? I mean, like. I've got closer than I think you could ever get. I'm like right in. I mean, like literally, if I had a rocket launcher or something now, I mean, I would be a massive threat to this place. And if it, you know, this thing starts pluming some of the things they're experimenting in these labs out, you know, this is bad. And and I'm just saying, like, how the hell am I getting this close? And how the hell have I not been approached, you know, and stopped from filming and doing what I'm doing? And how the hell am I in here? You know, and that was in a car. So my the message I'm going to send with this video is, if I can do this, somebody else can do this, and I really think you ought to just push your borders out a bit because this is crazy. You know, I think they've got a bit lax there, and they've taken away barriers because I remember that you couldn't oh, yeah. you couldn't go in. Now you can just drive right up to where. Oh, there's the big building where they do all the stuff. You know, it's like I was right next to it, just looking at the building. Like, 
in a car right next to it wow and i didn't even know you could do this but apparently you can now they, they just seem to have dropped all their security at that place and they have privatized it all now yes. that was mod when i was in it's it, all privatized yeah they, just, they won't care then well it's privatized but i mean the funny thing is i read a while back is it, it is most of it is owned by a guy a lebanese um, banker great yeah so yeah. all the most dangerous germs on the planet owned by a guy from lebanon yeah yeah you know but we can't we can't say like is that slightly weird you know like i would have to you you or i would have to be vetted to work there but the guy who owns it all mm. just, just happens to come from a country that we would consider to be uh, less than uh, exactly on the trusted trusted end of the spectrum <laughs> You know, so yeah, yeah. Oh dear. So that's where um, I went, and that's going to come out soon. So yeah, that'll be cool. That, that will be cool. That's gonna, yeah, ruffle a few feathers. But I mean, I just, I'm just putting across the message. I can't yeah. believe I've done this. I just can't believe I've done it, and how easy it was, and and like it, I shouldn't have been able to have done it. You know. It is surprising where you can actually get to without even climbing a fence. You literally walk in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I went to a place where you might have seen other uh, other sort of larger channels go where the, it's um, there's aircraft on a dummy runway and the aircraft are sort of laid out and the... The idea is it's an electronic warfare type place, so they get foreign air forces in to fly in, and they have to do reconnaissance on these aircraft that are static, um, and take pictures and that, and then the electronic warfare base that's right next to it um, has to sort of detect these incoming aircraft before, on and, and all that. But we just walked in, filmed and photographed all the aircraft, and walked back out again. Mm. I'm just yeah, thinking of the type of cool. place that that could be. There's a place up in Scotland called Spade Adam, where they do a lot of that sort of yeah, electronic warfare, warfare stuff. And uh, they've done yeah. they've done some really weird stuff up there. They're, they're actually doing the drone trials now for jamming drones because of all the stuff that happened mm. with Heathrow and Gatwick. So they're, they're trialling all that up there. Um, they quite often have GPS jamming notified is going to happen in that and around that area. So there's a lot of that goes on. Um, but I couldn't get over the fact that um, they they do take a lot of uh, intelligence targets up there for interrogation. I've heard about um, a number of people who've been just like shipped up to this place, taken in a room and interrogated. You know, so yeah, it's not not just what it appears on the uh, the outside. They do a lot more secret squirrel stuff up there than they let on. There's some big, big tunnels there as well. Mm. Big underground places. The, yeah, the. In the fifties, the United Kingdom wanted to build their own into intercontinental ballistic missiles. In the end, we just bought American ones, but that is where they were developing the British space program and into into ballistic um, intercontinental ballistic missiles was developed there. Mm. Uh, and all that facility is still there. Wow. Um, just overgrowing. Uh, but there are, I was looking, we were looking at the fence boundary, and there was many, many recent vehicle tracks there, so they're still using it for something. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't just turned off. Um, yeah, those bits are still in use. Yeah. It's good. Well, it's midnight now, so I'm going to have to go, really. Oh, okay. Well, that'll probably be me then. I might put this back in the fridge because I always, I always drink when I'm having a chat with people. But once the chat ends, no more drink. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, they're saying blue streak. Was that that what you're on about? Now? Blue streak. That was it. Yeah. Somebody, yeah, that was it. Somebody's told me something about um, that blue streak. I'll have a chat with you about it off here i can either t i can text mm. it to you or something like that but um yeah uh, an interesting little story that i've heard um of two separate people now so i'm wondering whether there is some truth in it but i'll have to go and check it out at some point 
Um, but uh, yes, well then, folks, I suppose we'll uh, we'll call it a day. And uh, so thanks very much for for popping in. And there is still time to not hit the like button and uh, and not subscribe, as we never suggest that you should ever do anything like that. But um, so. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm three or four K now, so you know if you didn't want to or wanted to, yes, that would be nice. Don't subscribe to me. Subscribe to him, right? And then uh, you know the world would be a better place. So give that a go. Um, so I'll say goodbye to everybody then in the in the chat. Thanks for all your uh, questions and uh, getting involved. And uh, yeah, look out for Porton down soon, and then probably I'll disappear into a police cell for a, for the maximum period that you can put people in there for terror terror offences. You know, even though what I'm actually doing is helping them secure the bloody place by pointing out how how bloody stupid you know the security is there. So I'm doing them a favour. I'll be uh, painted as mm. the bad guy, probably, as per usual. So, um, uh, yeah. So there we go. Right, well, yeah, thanks for having me on, Matthew. Thank you very, very much. Very much for popping in. That's very kind of you to to, to join us. And uh, I shall be watching some more of your videos now. I'll have to find out what you've been up to. So check you out. Check him out, ALW Exploration. And uh, we shall we we'll speak to you all soon. So if you want to hang on, I'll tell you what I'll tell you my little secret yeah, we'll piece do, of information. Yeah. So uh, okay then, folks. Off